Good day everyone! In this video, we will discuss about antiderivatives or indefinite integrals of functions. In the previous lessons, the focus was to find the derivatives of given functions using various differentiation formulas. This lesson introduces anti-differentiation, the operation that undoes differentiation, which help us find a function whose derivative is given. Let us define antiderivatives or indefinite integrals of functions. A function capital F is an antiderivative of the function F on an interval i if capital F prime of x is equal to f of x for every value of x in i. Note that capital F is called an antiderivative of F rather than the derivative of F. In general, once a single antiderivative is known, other antiderivatives can be obtained by adding constants to the known antiderivative. That is why an arbitrary constant C is usually added to take charge of this constant. Let us examine this example. Capital F of X is equal to 4X cubed plus X squared is an antiderivative of F of X equals 12x squared plus 2x. Notice that when we get the derivative of capital F, we will have 12x squared plus 2x, which is equal to f of x. Thus, we can say that capital F of x, which is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared, is the antiderivative of f of x. Remember, that the antiderivative capital F of a function f is not unique. Let us try to observe another example. Given a function f of x which is equal to 12x squared plus 2x, the following are its antiderivatives. First, capital F of x sub 1 is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared minus 1. Notice that when we get the derivative of this function, we will get the given f of x which is equal to 12x squared plus 2x. Another antiderivative is f of x sub 2 which is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared plus 1. Another antiderivative can be f of x sub 3 is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared minus 9. Notice that the following antiderivatives only differ with their constant. Moreover, when we consider getting the derivative of these functions, we will get the same derivative which is 12x squared plus 2x. The antiderivative of f is in the form capital F of x is equal to 4x cubed plus x squared plus c, where c is an element of real numbers. Let us consider another example. Given f of x which is equal to cosine x, the following are its antiderivatives. First, f of x sub 1 is equal to sine x plus 1. f of x sub 2 is equal to sine x minus pi. And f of x sub 3 is equal to sine x. Notice that when we get the derivative of these three functions here, we will all get the function f of x which is equal to cosine x. Moreover, notice that these functions here only differ in the constant. Now, we can say that the antiderivative of f is in the form capital F of x is equal to sine x plus c where C is an element of real numbers. Theorem If capital F is an antiderivative of F on an interval I, then every antiderivative of F on I is given by capital F of X plus C, where C is what we call an arbitrary constant. Using this theorem, we can conclude that if capital F sub 1 and capital F sub 2 are antiderivatives of F, then F of X sub 2 is equal to F of X sub 1 plus C. 
that is capital F sub 1 and capital F sub 2 differ only by a constant. Moreover, these are the terminologies and notations that we need to understand and remember for us to be able to easily understand the preceding lessons. Anti-differentiation is the process of finding the anti-derivative. This symbol here is called the integral sign, which denotes the operation of the anti-differentiation. Therefore, whenever you see this symbol, then remember that the operation is anti-differentiation, wherein we are finding the anti-derivative. The function f is called the integrand. If capital F is an antiderivative of f, we write the indefinite integral of f of x with respect to x is equal to capital F of x plus c. The integral sign and d of x go hand in hand and d of x helps us identify the variable of integration. The expression capital F of x plus c is called the general antiderivative of f. Meanwhile, each antiderivative of f is called a particular antiderivative of f. I hope that you have understood the lesson. For the next video, we will discuss about antiderivatives of algebraic functions. Thank you so much for listening and see you on our next video.